It was the 23rd of December. The Price is Right was on, that's what I was watching. Two or three of the girls went out on the back patio and come running in the house and, and said, Mama, I think Sheila's house is on fire. I run to the front and out the door and that's when I seen Todd at his front door and he started screaming, my babies. Oh, my babies, my babies are burning. Their neighbor, 23-year-old Cameron Todd Willingham, was in the house with his three children when the fire started. McCall came across the scanner. There was a, a house fire with possibly people trapped in it. I remember my mom screaming, go back in, go, go try to get the babies. And I grabbed him, I said, is there anybody in the house? He said, yes, my, my twins are in that room right there. Well, I went in the front door and I went to the left and that's as far as I could get. It was completely engulfed in fire. I pulled up on the scene, uh, got out and immediately started stretching the fire line and I made entry into the house, knocking the fire down as I went. The first fire, ca fire came out, he was cradling a small child uh, in his arms. He began to drop to one knee, and as he began to drop to one knee, uh, the little girl's arm just just fell fell limp right at her side. Uh, just, you know, just like a little rag doll. Firefighters tried to save two-year-old Amber, but she died shortly after reaching the hospital. Her sisters, Carmen and Cameron, were also dead. Their mother, Stacy, was Christmas shopping at a thrift store when the police told her. In the blackened ugliness, there are remnants of a fire. There are remnants of Christmas as well. A melted Christmas tree with a few ornaments, a teddy bear still waiting for Christmas morning. And there are two parents who want this Christmas to go away. My little girl was crying, Daddy, Daddy. When, when I woke up, the whole house was in smoke. Todd Willingham was virtually unharmed. He did have some minor burns on, on, on his shoulder and his hair was singed. It, to me, it just was not, the, the injuries were not consistent of being in a burning house that was so, supposedly burning so bad that, that he had to get out and couldn't find his kids. The police launched an investigation. Todd Willingham was the primary suspect. My job was to find how them little girls died. And if it is an act, a, a criminal act, it's my job to, to build a case so he can be prosecuted for his act. And Willingham's story didn't seem to square with his lack of injuries. He was barefoot when he come out, and he had no uh, burns on his feet. But we could see where there was burns in the hallway. And we can't figure out how he got out without burning his feet. My little girl was crying, Daddy, Daddy. <laughs> when, when I woke up, the whole house was in smoke. Todd Willingham was the prime suspect in the arson murder of his three children. The police brought him in for interrogation. My dad told him to go down there and give a statement. And when he went and gave a statement, he talks too much. That started it. Just his whole demeanor to me, it was more like he was bragging about it than, you know, being remorseful. Willingham said he heard the oldest one calling daddy and went into the bedroom and crawled around on the floor because the smoke was so thick and stuff looking for the, the babies, but he was unable to find them. And Willingham's story didn't seem to square with his lack of injuries. He was barefoot when he come out and he had no uh, burns on his feet, but we could see where there was burns in the hallway and we can't figure out how he got out without burning his feet. Detectives pushed Willingham to confess. They even used pictures of his dead children. And at that time, he started crying. You know, I don't think he was sad so much that he killed the kids as much as that it, it's coming to light that, you know, he's a suspect in it. They charged him with murder. Bail was set at a million dollars. They offered him a deal, confess and avoid the death penalty. 
His court-appointed attorney urged him to take the plea. If all the evidence is overwhelming that the person is guilty of the crime charged and the chances of introducing reasonable doubt are slim to none in your professional opinion, of course you'd rather have him accept a life sentence and save his life. Willingham refused. He'd take his chances in front of a jury. Cameron Todd Willingham had been sentenced to death for the arson murder of his three children. Then 12 years later, new evidence. Taking a look at the photographs and video and testimony and fire investigation report, it became apparent that uh, we were dealing with a fire which had gone to flashover. Flashover, the instant ignition of all combustible material in a room. flashover had left natural patterns on the floor that all post-flashover fires tend to leave behind, and these had been misidentified as poor patterns, and thus the fire had been labeled an arson. Hearst reviewed the report line by line. All right, here's your first bit of so-called arson evidence. This was typically interpreted in the old days as a pour pattern. In other words, someone poured ga gasoline or some other accelerant down the hallway, out the front door, and then ignited it. The prosecutor in this case literally believed that the burn patterns on the floor were in the shape of a pentagram, like some satanic ritual. When you actually look at the burn pattern that they drew, and then you look at where the windows are, windows furnish ventilation to a fire. And all they were looking at is what we call ventilation patterns. The original arson investigators had testified that there was evidence of a liquid accelerant on the threshold of the porch door. A sample of wood debris from the base of the front porch was analyzed, and the results were positive for a combustible liquid accelerant dash kerosene. Well, that's quite understandable because the porch also had a barbecue on it. And of course, it would be charcoal lighter fluid there if there was a can of charcoal lighter fluid on the porch. Hearst also addressed Willingham's lack of injuries. Why were Todd Willingham's feet not burned? And the answer to that question is quite simple. Because if no accelerant was poured on the floor, the floor would have been relatively cool until shortly after flashover occurred in the bedroom. The last part of him that would have gotten any burn would have been his feet. And Hearst concluded the original burn investigators pattern. had not eliminated accidental causes. There had to be at least one electrical short in that room. And since it was surface wiring, it would have been relative child's play to simply trace it, get a step ladder, and trace it and go over it inch by inch until you, until you locate the fault. That, in and of itself, is enough to toss the case out for arson. Hearst had come to believe Todd Willingham was not guilty. Todd Willingham's case falls into that category where there is not one iota of evidence that the fire was arson. Not, not one iota. Hearst completed his report only four days before the scheduled execution. Nevertheless, the Texas courts and the United States Supreme Court refused to delay the execution. It was just, you know, the train had left the station and nobody was going to stop it. And Texas Governor Rick Perry would not use his authority to delay the execution. In Texas, you do not get elected by granting stays of execution to people like Cameron Todd Willingham. You do not show any kind of mercy to criminals. You are hard on criminals, and that gets you elected in this state. At 6 o'clock, Cameron Todd Willingham was told that his time was up. When he was asked by the warden if he had anything to say, then he went into the statement where that he said he had been uh, uh, wrongly convicted and that he was innocent. Willingham's wife, Stacy, was watching from the witness room. She had testified against him. 
She walked up to the window and he said, you bitch. Not only did he tell his wife that he hoped she would uh, rot in hell, he said he hoped that she would rot in hell. I had heard a lot of things over covering hundreds of these executions in Texas over the years. I had never run into that. Then the drugs began to be administered, and uh, within, you know, within a few moments, he, he was unconscious. And then a few moments later, was pronounced dead. They told us that we could go to the funeral home when the state turned his body over to the funeral home and touch him while he was still warm. So that's what we did. Cameron Todd Willingham was put to death by lethal injection by the state of Texas on February 17, 2004. They said he set the fire that killed his three little daughters in Corsicana, Texas, two days before Christmas in 1991, a fire he escaped from. There is smoke damage in this room. There is some heat damage in this room. Here, in a video taken a few days after that fire, investigators walk through the house trying to figure out what happened. This is the bed where the two-year-old was found in the middle of the bed. They looked for clues they thought the fire left behind, and those clues they decided meant only one thing. The fire was deliberately set, and Todd Willingham was the man who set it. Doug Fogg was one of those arson investigators. You remain very confident oh, yeah. that this was arson. Totally. But that conclusion is now widely acknowledged by top fire investigators and scientists throughout the country to be deeply flawed. Do you believe that the state of Texas executed an innocent man? I do. I do. David Gran is a reporter for The New Yorker magazine. His recent story showed in damning detail that the investigative techniques used to send Todd Willingham to his death have now been discredited by modern science. This fire has now been examined multiple times by separate of the leading fire investigators in the country. Each one has concluded that there is absolutely no evidence of arson or that a crime ever occurred. Last month, an official report to the Texas Forensic Science Commission, a state panel reviewing the Willingham case, blasted the arson investigation as nothing more than a collection of personal beliefs that have nothing to do with science-based fire investigation. And even the original prosecutor in the trial admits the foundation of his case that arson killed those children is now undermined. You would agree that this report from the Texas Forensic Science Commission calls into very serious question the methodology uh, and the way this arson investigation. Without question that it really has a problem. That the techniques used were flawed. Deeply. Yes. But John Jackson still insists he sent a guilty man to the death chamber. Some of the evidence was certainly less than, less credible than I would have liked to see. And doesn't that give you pause at all about sending a man to death? Not a man like Todd. A man like Todd. Todd Willingham was certainly a man from the wrong side of the tracks, a man with a criminal record, mostly drug offenses and a robbery. His wife Stacy said Todd had beaten her, including when she was pregnant. To the prosecutor, that history of spousal abuse was key. The best evidence to me is not the investigation of the arson. The best evidence that I believe I presented was the uh, uh, prior attempts of Todd Willingham to kill his children. He beat his wife when she was pregnant, therefore he killed his children in the fire. I think that's a major factor that most finders of facts such as jurors would consider. Todd's wife, Stacy, specifically denied Jackson's argument in the trial and insisted her husband, while violent towards her, would never have hurt their children. Stacy declined our request for an interview through a family member. We don't execute people who beat their wives. And the only question that matters in this case is did Cameron Todd Willingham set a fire on December 23rd, 1991 that burned down his house and killed his three children? So it comes back to the fire. 
Doug Fogg and Manuel Vasquez made this diagram showing where the floor was charred, where flames were seen bursting out of the windows, where there were brown rings on the concrete porch. It all looked very suspicious. I have no doubt that the fire was deliberately set. What's the best evidence for that? The elimination of the accidental causes. We found the, the liquid accelerant. That's right. Lab tests showed the presence of a flammable liquid on the porch near where the family kept a barbecue grill and lighter fluid. But all other tests throughout the home showed nothing suspicious. Nevertheless, Fogg decided Todd Willingham had lit a fire at the front door, blocking rescue attempts, and the fire had followed a trail of liquid accelerant he had poured through the hall and into the children's bedroom, where they were sleeping, and where the floor was badly charred in what the investigators determined were poor patterns. I am very convinced of what I saw, what I did, and that I didn't make mistakes. All these indicators are simply based on folklore. Uh, they're, they're, they're old wives' tales. There's no scientific basis for them. Since the Willingham fire in 1991, there has been a revolution in the scientific understanding and analysis of fires. Gerald Hurst is one of the pioneers of that revolution and one of the many leading modern fire analysts who have looked at the Willingham case. This is just a typical fire. Typical fire, yes. He was executed for arson for the murder of his daughter. That's right, he was, because the people who investigated the fire did not understand the behavior of fire. Inside Todd Willingham's house in the children's room, investigators found a charred floor, proof of arson, they thought. But modern science has discredited that theory. Nevertheless, prosecutor John Jackson thought those so-called poor patterns on the floor proved something else, too that Todd Willingham worshipped Satan. It's perhaps a pentagram kind of a figure uh, that some people associate with devil worship, that sort of thing. You think that, that Todd Willingham poured accelerant in the shape of a pentagram, some kind of devil worship thing? I think that's very possible, and I think it's very likely. It's likely? Yes. Jackson also learned that Todd was a fan of the heavy metal group Iron Maiden and had posters and tattoos of skulls and other heavy metal imagery. Based on the fact that he liked heavy metal and Iron Maiden and liked the uh, metal rock groups that use skulls and those kinds of imagery, that makes him a devil worshiper? No, it does not make him, but it makes it more likely that he is a devil worshiper or he is obsessed with uh, uh, Satan-like figures and that sort of thing. And that would, that's evidence that he killed his children? Uh, that's certainly one factor that, a, that uh, a finder of fact could consider. Jackson offered Willingham a plea bargain. Confess to killing his children, his life would be spared. Todd refused angrily. I think it's a response to his belief that a life sentence for him would be uh, worse than a death penalty. Isn't it also possible he just was telling the truth when he said, I will never plead guilty to something I didn't do, especially killing my kids? I, I don't think it's a very good possibility that Todd Willingham ever told the truth to anybody about anything. He, he's one of the most completely manipulative individuals that you'd ever hope to find. He's still manipulating us from the grave. John Jackson is now a senior judge in Corsicana. He stands by his case. They say the conclusions reached by these investigators are not warranted by modern fire science and are based on primitive old wives' tales folklore. It's not to say that they're not correct, though. It's, you send a man to death on that. I'm comfortable with that. Beyond a reasonable doubt. Beyond a doubt. There was other evidence, the fact that Todd escaped with only minor injuries. A jailhouse snitch, a mentally ill drug addict who has since recanted his testimony. But it really boiled down to that arson evidence and Todd Willingham. This letter is July 26, 2001. Reporter David Grant obtained copies of the letters and diaries Todd wrote on death row. I could handle being here for something I did, but to be persecuted like this for nothing... 
I shall never understand. No God who cared about his creation would abandon the innocent. On February 17, 2004, Todd Willingham was put to death. He said just before he died, I am an innocent man convicted of a crime I did not commit. I have been persecuted for 12 years for something I did not do. From God's dust I came, and to dust I will return, so the earth shall become my throne. Cameron Todd Willingham was executed seven years ago, convicted of setting his house on fire to kill his three children. His appeals, including to the Supreme Court, repeatedly denied. Texas Governor Rick Perry signed off on the execution. Willingham was a monster. Just before Willingham's death, a nationally known fire expert studying the arson investigation found it horribly flawed that the original investigators had relied on outdated arson science. Willingham supporters asked the governor to halt the execution. Perry refused. We have a system in this state that has followed the procedures and they found this man guilty every step of the way. Cameron Todd Willingham's execution still haunts Rick Perry. The question is not only did Texas execute an innocent man, but did Perry use his power to try and shut down a potentially embarrassing investigation into how Willingham was convicted? If there was no arson, Willingham would not have been executed. If this case went to trial today, I can't see any way that Willingham would be convicted. I can't see any way that, this, that a prosecutor would bring this case forward today. The Innocence Project brought Willingham's case to an obscure state agency called the Texas Forensic Science Commission, which started looking into whether bad arson investigative techniques were used to convict Willingham. That the science was indeed junk science. Sam Bassett was head of the commission. He says he was called into a heated meeting with two governor's aides and told the investigation was a waste of state money. I couldn't believe that they were injecting themselves into uh, the commission business so directly and so confrontationally. You got the sense clearly they wanted to influence the outcome, I guess? Yes. I, that, that was my sense, that they wanted us to stop the investigation. The commission kept working. More fire experts agreed the investigation relied on junk science. Seven months later, Bassett says he was suddenly told he was not being reappointed because the governor wanted to take the commission in a different direction. I've seen just kind of an endless drumbeat of, of strategies and actions to stop this investigation. It's been terribly disappointing. And why do you think you were taken off this commission? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that um, that this was a situation that the governor's office clearly did not want us to conclude. Perry has denied Sam Bassett's removal was politically motivated, and the governor remains as unwavering today as he was two years ago in his opinion that Willingham deserved to be executed. Go look at the facts and you will find that this was an incredibly bad man who murdered his kids, and the record will stand the scrutiny. More than two years later, the Cameron Todd Willingham investigation is still stalled, and nobody can say for sure if Texas executed an innocent man. Cameron Todd Willingham, you are guilty of capital murder. By order of the state of Texas, you are sentenced to death. You're my first visitor in a long time. How long has it been? Eight years. Prisoners talk about doing time. On the road, there is no time. The clock stopped moving the minute we were sentenced. How about you tell me what happened? Any man can't save his own kids. Don't deserve to live. But I did not kill my own children, Elizabeth. I love them more than I love life itself. I found myself talking to a vulnerable, sensitive man. I believe the state of Texas is about to kill an innocent man. You failed to challenge witnesses that changed their story. He had the motive. He had the means. That boy is a monster, and he will die. His lawyer decided Todd was guilty from the get-go. He failed to find a single scientific expert. Doesn't mean he's innocent. Don't let your emotions get the better of you. My emotions? What? Because I'm a woman? Great. I'm going to go finish your job for you. 
You ever read Man's Search for Meaning? He says, to live is to suffer. And to survive, you gotta find meaning in the suffering. I wanna live. That's why we're not gonna give up. Why do you think Todd Willingham confessed to you? I ain't supposed to talk about this stuff, Who so... told you not to talk about it? The district attorney? Oh, they are gonna kill an innocent person. No, I got a gun. Get out of here, then! These so-called experts didn't even bother to check the space heater. There's no arson, there's no crime. It ain't gonna make no difference. Liz, I'm not here to be safe. I am here to die. What chance we got, honestly? You think this is just about Todd? The system doesn't work. It's broken. These are my last days, Liz. If I start hoping, he's gonna go by just like that. I understand, but I'm hoping.